Very good afternoon to you, and we're coming to you live from the FNB Stadium. I've got to tell you this, Clement, as I was driving uh, into the stadium, it is packed on the roads. Lots of buses, and of course, uh, you will know that I come from a number of provinces in this country. Looked in particular at a bus that I used to see when I was a, a young boy attending school in KZN, Durban Transport. Those buses parked outside. So that tells you just the amount of organization that the EFF has had to do to pull this off. And, well, who better to speak to than the party itself? Let's speak now to Snao Tambo. He is the national spokesperson for the Economic Freedom Fighters. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much for your time. I mentioned to Clement, it's, it must take quite an organization to pull something like this. This is a 94,000 capacity stadium. Are you confident you're going to pull this off? Absolutely. We're confident. We're overjoyed. We're excited and we're proud that we've been able to organize our people from various parts of the country. Our public representatives have brought their constituencies, as you were saying. Durban Transport is here. My own buses from Kabeha are already here. The comrades have told me they've arrived safely and sound and they're enjoying themselves. The TG earlier was telling your colleagues as well that their buses from the northwest are here. And of course, the people of Gauteng are walking from Deep Kloof and they are coming from Tuane, from City Bank, from the West Rand, to fill up the stadium and celebrate uh, with the 10 years of unbroken struggle of the EFF. So we're excited, we're happy, we're confident, and uh, we're in a jovial mood. We're not fighting today. <laughs> You're not fighting today. That's very interesting. So we were talking off air just moments ago, and you were saying that this was an idea that was thought of last year in order to celebrate 10 years of existence. Why the choice of FNB Stadium and why this kind of uh, an occasion where you want to fill up a 94,000 capacity stadium? Look, we have to rise to the occasion and the moment and the symbolic significance of marking a decade of uh, fighting for the economic emancipation of our people. And there was no better way than to do that at FNB Stadium. So I was saying also earlier to other colleagues that we were humble enough, but we had a sense of humility enough to start gradually in our first uh, celebrations of our first anniversary, second anniversary. We'd go to stadiums, Sisa Dukashi Stadium, go to uh, stadiums in Limpopo, we'd go to stadiums in KZN, in Carisfontaine, because we understood that we have to be gradual and scientific about this process and not be arrogant and think simply because we are a big or uh, popular organization, we can fill up any type of stadium that we feel like it. So now we have presence in 90% of the wards of South Africa. We have more than 1 million members. We have public representatives, more than 1,000 of them. We are represented in legislatures, in parliament, in councils. We have MMCs now. We are at a stage where we can actually take on a giant such as FNB Stadium. And that's why we are here, because we are confident that we've reached a level where there's no venue in South Africa we can't fill. There's no amount of people we can't bring from any corner of South Africa. They are here from Kabeha, from Tanzania, from uh, Bochum, from everywhere across South Africa. There are people here to celebrate with us. You talk about a venue in South Africa that you cannot not fill. It reminds me of a certain party that I won't mention by name, mm. whose obsession at one time was mm. to fill up stadiums. Mm. And this reminds me of, of that kind of um, organization. Is this some kind of competition to say, we have arrived, we are a party to be reckoned with? Absolutely not. This is actually a closing celebration for the EFF. So if you remember, we started with a media launch in February on the 28th. And from there, we've been visiting old age homes, orphanages, centers for children with disabilities, improving the infrastructure in those places, in all nine provinces. And we've left 100,000 rand in all of those facilities for them to continue to improve those facilities. But we've even gone further, and we've adopted them as the EFF, and we'll continue their maintenance. We've published their banking details, and they won't be part of the legacy projects of the EFF. We had a stage play called the Ruo, where the history of the EFF was depicted in an artistic format, and some lessons we've learned there is that there are places in this country that don't appreciate the arts. There on theatres there as well. So that's a developmental initiative that we've undertaken. Yeah. We did a fifth Jazz Hour album. We had a commemorative walk. We had an EFF exhibition. We've done so many developmental and educational things. Poetry competition, essay competition, where students and learners and young people get rewards of 40,000 each, 50,000 for the poetry competition winner, for the artistic expression of a 10 years of unbroken struggle of the EFF. So we've done so much 
that's not related to filling up a venue. This is just a celebration and one of those. And of course, we're in Marikana on the 26th to pay homage to the blood that gave birth to the EFF in terms of the sacrifice of those workers. So yeah. we've done many symbolic, many developmental and many educational events. So we're not a fill up, we're not a fill up stadium organization, but this is to show South Africa that uh, we, we mean business and we can do anything we want to do at any point in time. I've got to wrap the conversation, and in a moment we've got to give the viewers a sense of when the leader of the organization is going to address here. There are those today who are going to be watching this at home, and yet they belong to this party. These are the councillors that you have decided that you're going to ban them from attending here because they simply did not live up to expectations. I listened to that and I thought, how many South Africans, and I'm wondering, how many South Africans are thinking, this is, this is way too harsh mm. a punishment mm. for people who have to draw from their own monies in order to make sure that they pull this off, to organize that people come here in buses. W why that kind of stance? And, by the way, is the leadership of the EFF is Julius Malema taking money out of his own pocket to do exactly what, it, what he expects of these councillors. Look, the resolution which was taken at the plenum of the EFF and Central Command team in January was that all public representatives must bring their constituencies to FNB Stadium to celebrate this uh, marking of a decade of unbroken struggle. And that is the ethos of it. It was not a punishment. It was not a test. It was us saying, bring the people that you claim to represent to FNB Stadium so that they can be part of this celebration. So no one was told to use their own money. I didn't use my own money. My salary is hardly enough to pay for buses from PE to Johannesburg. We were tasked to fundraise, to interact with the business community, to interact with ordinary people who love our movement, people who want to give back and appreciate the organization, to make contributions towards bringing our constituencies to FNB Stadium. So there's nothing harsh about it. A leader must be able to show capacity, not only as an intellectual, not only as an activist, but also to be able to bring the people you came to represent to events of significance. And that was, that, that was not a punishment at all. And uh, a leader must feel proud to be able to bring the people that they represent so far to be able to partake in an, in an event such as this. So it's not harsh, it's not a punishment. Uh, those organ, those uh, leaders were not able to meet this expectation, were given a six-month period to do this, and they were unable to do so. And uh, the organization survives on mandate and accountability, and if you fail to account for the mandate that you've been given, then there must be consequence, consequence management for that. As we conclude, the people watching from home, they're going to uh, wait in anticipation as to what time the leader of this organization is going to deliver the speech here, the main speech. What time will that be and what, what, what is the main message? Look, our people are still filing in queues, as you were saying. We are driving through crowds of people outside. So we're trying to manage access into the stadium. So we're not... Uh, as uh, contrary to popular belief or contra, cont contrary to popular distortion, we're not hooligans or anarchists or people who operate in a manner that is not organized. We're filling the stadium at a phase-by-phase -phase basis. So we started from the bottom and we're rising to the top. And ironically, that's what we've done as an organization. And that's what we're doing to fill the stadium. So our people are filing in. Uh, once everyone is able to get into the stadium and take their seat, the commander-in-chief will be able to take the podium and address them. So there's no issue of attendance. The crowds are outside. We're filing them in on a phase-by-phase -phase basis to ensure that there's no... No one who gets hurt in that regard. I've got to pitch in mm. and say that as I drove in, the time was at around 10. Mm. I could see the excitement, of course, people in buses, taxis, but there's lots of alcohol as well that I saw. People inebriated mm. on the road. Mm. They are coming out of vehicles to relieve themselves in open sight. Mm. I'm not saying that you will be able to police all of that, but mm. I also, though, picked up from your own leader via his Twitter feed saying that, please be well behaved. Yes. How do you police something like that? How do you ensure that the people come here mm. and they go back home? In one piece. It's unacceptable. So all buses and transportation should have bus coordinators led by people who are going to ensure there's discipline and order coming to FNB Stadium. So this is not a festival of drunkards, it's a festival of revolutionaries. So we want to urge all fighters who are partaking in that activity to cease and desist. We don't operate like that. We have an understatement cleaning campaign, for example, where we ensure that our communities are safe 
ensure that our communities are healthy and, rid, and we get rid of uh, rubbish and toxic waste in those communities. So it can't be EFF members or EFF fighters who engage in such disorderly activities. So we call on them to desist for that. We call on discipline and we call on all of the coordinators of our buses to ensure that fighters are disciplined and come and listen to the speech of the Commander-in-Chief and President. As you say, we can't police that behavior, but it's certainly not uh, part and parcel of the character of the organization. And they know that very well. What time will the leader speak? The Commander-in-Chief will probably speak uh, very soon. Uh, let's allow our people to enter the stadium. We don't want them to be left out and get the speech starting and have a stampede at the gates. Uh, FNB Stadium is structured in such a way that everyone comes in filing one by one at 10 stars. So we're managing that process. You can see we're filling up the stadium. Let's uh, be patient. Let's enjoy. Let's have conversations. You can join us as well anytime and place in the entertainment areas. Let's enjoy this uh, celebration of the EFF. Thank you very much. It's now Tambo.